I want to know if these two clones of the TLR1 perform as well as the light they're copying. It's no secret that I love the TLR1 HL. It's the light that I run on my Glock. I find the momentary and constant switches are great and its performance is right up there with the best of the pistol lights. So why would someone not run a TLR1 and instead run something that looks pretty similar? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons. One is if the performance could be better. The TLR1 performance is good, but if you can improve upon it, then why not? And the second reason is cost. The TLR1 is priced about $129. And if you can find a light that performs just as well for less money, then maybe that works better for you. So I selected two lights that might be representative of what you'd find out there in the same form factor as the TLR1, in other words, holster compatible, but at a better price point and potentially better performance. So first up, I selected the Goon Beam Pistol Short V1. I'm gonna call it the G-Beam because that's what they have written on the bottom there. My understanding is that Goon Beam is a one-man show. He creates modified pistol lights and sells them on Reddit or Etsy. And uh, that's where I found and picked this up as well as some other lights from him. It's priced at $89 and it is supposed to provide a higher candela output than the TLR1. So this light is priced at $89. The specs on it are sparse. It is supposed to have a high candela output. That's about all I knew at the time of purchase. Now the light itself looks like a $40 Alibaba clone. And yes, you can go buy TLR1 clones for about 40 bucks on Alibaba. It has the same Glock rail key as you'd get with a uh, TLR1. It also has very similar switches and they actually feel very similar to the, uh, the TLR1. Same battery door mechanism and same rail clamp. Pretty much it looks like a Chinese copy TLR1. Next up, I have the LA Police Gear Slide Rail XWL and it looks not like a direct copy of the TLR1. It has very similar form factor it has a slightly different key. It has a slightly different bezel. The rail clamp is different. The switches feel very similar to the TLR1, but they are a little bit stiffer. And then finally, it has heat sink down here on the bottom, which shouldn't interfere with the holster. Now this light comes in at $79 and it boasts 800 lumens, which is 200 lumens less than the TLR1 HL. Oh yes, and the battery door is a little bit different. It uses a clamp here, and a door that opens up. I don't know if that's any better or worse than the battery doors that we've had on our TLR1 HLs. And we know that the battery door is typically a failure spot. Our practical test is in a warehouse space. This test allows us to see from the operator's viewpoint, the light flood and the light hotspot and how well details show up in the subject. I can see where that's coming from. So it's, I got the streaks, but pretty similar. Actually, really similar. Ah, that hurts more. I can see where it's coming from and I can probably get my gun on it, but it hurts, it definitely hurts more. The TLR1 HL and the XWL both perform pretty similarly with a similar sized hotspot and a similar amount of flood out to the sides. The TLR1 HL and the XWL also appear to be about the same temperature or color. The GB on the other hand has a tighter hotspot and it also appears noticeably cooler. With all three of these lights, you can see the pistol in my right hand and you can see skin tones pretty well. However, from the subject's perspective, there was a noticeable difference. Both the TLR1 HL and the XWL had what I would consider a wall of light. It was a bright hotspot with streamers out from there. I could sort of pinpoint where the hotspot was coming from. The G-Beam on the other hand was notably more intense from the subject's perspective. It was what I would call a painful light. 
looking at that light was hard to do. And while I could kind of can make out where it was, it was really painful to be looking in that direction. Now onto our lab testing. And first up is our lumen testing. We throw everything into an integrating sphere. We gather a bunch of data and that will tell us which light has the highest output. In this case, the Streamlight TLR1 does come out on top for all of the lumen testing with 1163 ANSI Play-Doh lumens. The LA Police Gear comes in second with 803 ANSI Play-Doh lumens. And finally, the G-Beam comes in at 565 ANSI Play-Doh lumens. Now using the standard Panasonic batteries that we use, all of these lights had great runtime. Now, I will say that the LA Police Gear had significant longer runtime than we normally see. This light takes over four and a half hours to dip below 10 lumens. Now, if you want to see full output charts and all the data, go to lowlightdefense.com. Now, at this point, I do need to address the only failure we had. The G-Beam shipped with two rechargeable batteries, and we did not get great performance in the integrating sphere using the rechargeable batteries. Once the test was run, we pulled the batteries out, put them on a charger, and one of the batteries, even after hours, would not charge. It looks like one of the batteries died. Now, I personally don't think that that's a big deal because we just throw in a couple more Panasonics, but it means that we only tested once using the rechargeable batteries shipped with this unit. Now, you may wonder if Works is sponsored by any light manufacturers. The answer is no. We sell holsters for pistols with lights. So if you're looking for a light-bearing holster, please check us out. This allows us to provide you with unbiased data so you can make the best choice for the weapon light you carry. Next up is a new test for duty cycle consistency. We posted a survey on YouTube, and we found that about 23% of people do not expect to ever use a weapon light for up to two minutes. The scenario is this. Hit the light on, gather data, turn the light off, and then potentially move or take care of other administrative tasks, and then go ahead and hit the light on again. So our test is to run this light for 15 seconds on, and then for the rest of the minute, keep it off, and do this again and again for 10 minutes. The idea is that this allows us to measure how well a weapon light performs with a 25% duty cycle on and off repeatedly. Now we're also looking for consistency to see if that light performance drops off or varies during those cycle times. The Taylor one hl had at least 1,074 lumens for all the cycles and it had a 96% consistency. The G-Beam had at least 536 lumens and had a 96% consistency as well. The LA Police Gear had at least 915 lumens and had a lower 91% consistency. It appears that all these lights performed okay on this test. Now, candela is an important measurement of how far a light will punch out or how well it punches through photonic barriers, such as if I'm on a dark doorway and a light's kind of shining towards you. For maximum candela, the Streamlight TLR1 HL had a respectable 14,500. The LA Police Gear had a couple thousand less. But the real surprise here is that the Goon Beam had almost 38,000 candela, over double either of the other two lights. When you look at the charts, you can see that this shows how tight the hotspot is because as soon as we get five degrees off from center, the other lights are brighter. But if you're talking about the hotspot, the Goon Beam has the brightest hotspot, and that explains why I had such difficulty looking into the light in our practical test. Ah, that hurts more. Don't get me wrong, 12,500 or 14,500 of the other two lights is very good, but the Goon Beam beats them both handily in the Candela test. Our last testing looks at the quality of the light with CRI and the color temperature. Now, color temperature measures how warm or cold a light looks to our eyes. I personally prefer a color temperature around 5600 Kelvin. The light that comes closest to my target is the Streamlight TLR1 HL at 6500 Kelvin. A little bit cooler than the TLR1 is the G-Beam at 7200 Kelvin, 
and then the XWL at 7400 Kelvin. Now when lights go towards the cool end of the spectrum, sometimes it can be hard to see skin tones and colors appear off. Finally, we look at the Color Rendering Index, or CRI. It's important for a light to put out all the full spectrum of colors so that we can get those light colors bounce back to our eyes. If the light doesn't produce the color, then we can't see it. Now for the average CRI, all of these lights came in right around 70. I prefer to see 75 or higher, but these are acceptable numbers. So what does all this data mean? All right, so if you're looking for a great, reliable, professional choice, the Streamlight TLR1 still provides great output and has all that holster compatibility that you've grown to love. The LA Police Gear Slide Rail XWL provides almost TLR1 level performance and you pay almost $50 less for it. And finally, the G-Beam was a bit of a wild card, but it didn't disappoint me because it does push the limits of Candela. I appreciate that somebody is out there trying to drive and create slightly better products for all of us. If you need Max Candela and you're willing to take the chance on somebody new, then maybe the G-Beam might be worth a try for you. Now, all of these lights should be reasonably holster compatible with the Streamlight Tail R1. In our experience, we've had to loosen up retention to get them to fit properly into our holsters. Your mileage may vary. All right, so summary. Great product, great price, great Candela. <laughs>